Yo, it's Indra and in today's tutorial we're going to be exploring how to step up your glass shaders, how to make them a lot more juicy, a lot more textured. We're going to be looking at chromatic aberration and how we can get a nice spectrum of colours within our glass. And this video is kindly sponsored by NVIDIA. Um, they'll be providing the hardware that I'm working with. I'm working with a 4090 and I'm going to be showing you how it optimizes all of the ray tracing, all of the shiny speckles and reflections and light calculations that are going to be in the video. Um, so yeah, let me say, let me say no more. Let me say no more. So I'm using Blender 3.4.1 and we'll be rendering in cycles. Um, so bearing in mind, you can apply this material to whatever mesh you want, like literally whatever, whatever mesh you desire, you can apply it to. I made this like, um, chainsaw mesh. Um, it's not like the cleanest mesh ever, um, but it does the job. This is what we're going to apply our material to, but like I said, whatever shape, whatever mesh you want to put it on. The world is your oyster. So first I'm going to set up my camera by hitting zero um, and just making sure that we've got camera to view. Also probably going to go with a square ratio. So just changing this to 1920 by 1920. Zooming in to like kind of get what I'm going for, sort of like a nice angle. Your and then you can take this off so your movements don't affect your camera position. When the crosshairs come up over here, I'm just gonna, oh, no, 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 no. Don't wanna do that, okay. Yeah, when the crosshairs come up, you can drag a brand new window. I'm gonna hit T on this so we just get a nice clean window. So now we can move around and we've got our camera set up. Quickly, after selecting camera, Gonna change the viewport display pass by two. I don't speak French. Pass by two. Yeah, we're gonna turn that up so we only see kind of what we need to see. Let's set up some lights. So over here in camera, we're gonna go to rendered view, and not much is going on because our object has no texture assigned to it. So we're gonna quickly add a material. Uh, it should go white. Uh, which it hasn't because there's no lights in the scene either. So absolutely nothing is going on in the scene. So switch our editor type to shader editor, switch from object to world. And I'm gonna bring this to black. Back in the 3D viewport, I'm gonna start adding some lights to our object. Um, so hit shift A, we're gonna add an area light and kind of gonna do like a four point lighting setup. So I'm gonna scale this up and now you can see that we're getting some light affecting our object. And with this 3D gizmo, it just lets you change loads of things all at once. I'm gonna scale this light up. Um, but you'll notice when you move the light, there's just so many like adjustments you have to do to make sure the light is pointing at your object. We can make this a lot simpler by adding a empty, my brain went empty for a second. Add an empty, pretty much scale it up, pretty much where your focal object is. Go on the light and we're gonna add a object constraint and it's going to be a damped track object constraint um, focusing on this empty and we're going to hit negative Z. So whenever we move our light, it will always be focusing on the empty, no matter what orientation. So yeah, I'm gonna go with like some light at the bottom. Obviously it needs to be a lot brighter. So I'm just gonna hit 250. Um, to be honest, for the time being, I am a big fan of sort of like additive lighting. Cause when you add too much light, then you can't tell what light is affecting what and you have to like remove it. Um, but just to show you the effect of the textures, I'm gonna add a couple lights to my object sort of one behind, um, one to the side and another one to the other side and gonna sort of adjust those. 
right cool so we've just got some lighting going on for the time being uh, and we can go back and change those later but I think the next sort of point of reference is adding some textures uh, starting to work on this glass shader let's switch our editor type to shader editor once again go into object view object edit, object shader editor and we can add a new material to our object i'm not sure if i did that before i might have accidentally not but um if this button is there click it if not then you should have something that looks like this um so yeah that now we've just got like a basic principle shader but we're not going to be using this one today we're going to hit shift a and add i'm just checking is my screencast working ah it's not cool so yeah just gonna delete our principal shader and we're gonna add a glass shader a glass bsdf and we're going to have three instances of this shader by hitting shift d to duplicate it twice these are going to be the three main dispersion channels which are going to create a spectrum between the colors so in our case because we want rgb sort of chromatic aberration we can change these colors to be an r a red a green and a blue channel so the easiest way is to just go into rgb and bring the green and blue values down to zero and just do the opposite for the other channels so with blue we're going to turn off red and green completely these are our three channels and to combine the effects we're going to use an add shader by hitting shift a and just search up add duplicate that twice so our bdsf number one and two can go into the first plugs not the one over here and the bottom one of blue can go into those so now we've combined the effects of these um, nodes the only thing is and I'll pick, pull up a picture in order to see the full effects of these three channels we need to sort of displace them by a small amount but this displacement means that the channels won't be overlapping right on top of each other and the displacement means that we get sort of this stretched out spectrum of color so instead of talking about it I'm gonna show you what I mean and it's literally just as simple as changing the numbers for the index of refraction for all of these channels we're going to keep this center one at 0. Point, sorry 1.45 but the top channel can be 1.4 and the bottom channel can be 1.5 so you can see that the difference between all these channels is an incremental difference of 0. 0.05 i don't know my numbers so if we plug in shader into surface You'll notice, um, you'll notice that it, 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 there's no colors going on and that's because I'm still in Eevee, sorry. I want to work in cycles for this one. So if we switch up to cycles, then we can start to see this juicy, juicy dispersion. Mm, chromatic aberration, mm, amazing. Also, look at this, these slow viewport times. What's all that about? If you're running NVIDIA hardware and you're seeing this pixelated mess, then make sure your GPU is enabled as well. Thanks to the NVIDIA Studio drivers, we've got dedicated hardware that accelerates your Blender experience. And not only Blender, I'm currently editing this video in Premiere and it's also accelerated. And if I fancy editing this video in DaVinci, it's accelerated too. NVIDIA have taken the time to accelerate a lot of creative applications so make sure you check those out. Back to the shader, there's still a little bit more that we can add to make it even juicier. And the first thing we're going to add is another combination shader but this time we're going to use a mix shader. And, and into this shader we're going to plug in two things. Firstly a glossy shader which we plug into the bottom nodes to which we're going to add an image texture let's put, bring this down there and plug color into roughness roughness determines how matte or glassy we want our final material to be but i'm going to plug in an image texture and open up a um, scratch texture that i've got over here i'm going to probably use scratched metal 
If you've got Node Wrangler enabled, you can hit Ctrl T on the scratched metal texture and this will bring up these nodes, otherwise you can just add them manually and plug in object into vector and now we can see we've got some cool little scratches on the surface of our glass. To kind of like change the intensity of the scratches, we can add a colour ramp to the middle here and if we bring that down, then we get a lot more apparent scratches. Um, so I'm gonna like sort of meet these in the middle somewhere like that and you can always come back and change this later I also quickly forgot to add a noise sorry a bump node and to plug in normal into normal and color into height this is gonna give the scratches some bump but literally it's not that deep for them to be that strong I'm also going to invert it so the scratches go into the surface of the chainsaw. Anyway, back to this mix shader, we're going to add a Fresnel node. Fresnel is super cool. It basically determines, basically determines the angle that an object is being viewed at and calculates the dispersion based on the viewing angle. I also wanted to touch on the fact that these channels, you can change them to absolutely whatever colour that you want. You guys know at this point I am obsessed with green, I need to actually stop, it's kind of getting a bit weird. I'm going to change these values so that my green channel is, um, is stronger than my other channels. It's mainly this green that I'm focused on getting right, but when making small adjustments like these, shout out to the NVIDIA Studio drivers. They make it so much easier to see the effects of small changes in viewport. The dedicated Optic X denoising cores are at it again. It's filling in the gaps between calculated rays to produce a pretty much clean image in near real time, which is ridiculous. This just wasn't it just wasn't possible up until recent years so I'm, i just feel so blessed that my silly little brain trying to find the perfect shade of green for this it, it's so easy to do this let alone look at my geometry there, there's millions of polygons in this shape and i'm just able to navigate it without a hitch so it's both a hardware and a software marvel anyway I think I'm liking this green, but like I said, the lighting is just not giving a lot. So if we want to amplify and really get the best out of our materials and textures, lighting is so, so important. Let me show you, if you're struggling with lighting, the easiest way to kind of like get it to look better. <sighs> I wasn't recording any of how I set up the lights up to this point, so I'm going to reverse engineer what I've done um, but yeah I think what I started off by saying was we want to turn all our lights off to zero so I had all my lights off and this is what I mean about additive lighting you solve the practice of starting from zero and adding slowly and those additions are the effects that you observe instead of you know reductive sort of like taking things away after you have no idea of what light is lighting what so taking this scene for example uh, we've got absolutely no lights and i started by adding a base light so i started with like 250 strength and i was like oh that looks good but i think in initially the light was like down here so i've just been playing around with like the reflections to get the perfect sort of artifacting along the side please remember lighting is totally subjective there is no right no wrong there are rules doesn't necessarily mean you have to follow them. So just do what looks good for you and take it slowly. So I've been I've been messing around with this light for like the past 10 minutes, finding the exact perfect place that I think it looks brilliant in. And I've settled on it right here because when it was too frontal, I get this gray kind of like reflection, which I'm not too big of a fan of. And when it's behind, I get this really nice sort of like, you know, diffusion through the glass. So I settled on down here because I got loads of artifacts. I got this nice amber sort of, you know, the way I'm gonna say artifacts a million times because it is my favorite word. But it, yeah, I've got some amber artifacts down here and it looks really good. So once you're settled on your first light, then you just build and build and build from there. And sometimes less is, less is more. I think before I had another light back here, which was like turned up to like 250. And it just blew out the entire shape. I wasn't feeling it. 
So I said, you know what? Boom. Goodbye. It's gone. Let's start again. Let's maybe bring up a backlight up here. I'm going to bring it up to like 250. And actually this light, I kind of wanted it a bit brighter. So I'm going to go with 300. This light up here, I then spent, you know, 15 minutes figuring out where the light hit the peaks at the top here to get this nice, again, amber sort of colours coming through. Depending on where you move it, you get different effects. You might like this sort of like highlighting the green and that's totally up to you. It totally is up to you and that can be scary but it can also give you the freedom to really hone in on your style, which is sometimes what you need. So carrying on, I'm gonna now enable this other light on the side. It's gonna hit, hit like 250. Again, we've got this grey going on. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but if I do need a little bit of grey to sort of make the blade stand out from the black background, then I will have to use it. I will have to use it. Um, the larger your object is, the more diffused the light will be. So I'm quite liking this really diffused light that kind of just lights up the entire blade to make sure that, you know, this isn't like, this isn't just fading into the background. Again, you might like it fading into the background. Totally up to you. So that's a bit of simple lighting. Um, I have a very weird way of doing it. Like this, what's that? Like what's all that about? You can also play with gobos, like adding things in front of the light to cast shadows on your object. But that, I'm gonna leave that for another time. The reason I was really excited to show you guys this tutorial is to just like show off how the ray tracing and tentacles handle diffraction and dispersion and glass textures so, so brilliantly. It's super interesting when you start to understand the amount of computation that goes behind producing an, an image like this, especially in real time. Ray tracing is what enables us to create or like produce an image like this by calculating a number of rays that bounce around the scene um, and how they would in the real world sort of reflect off objects to create shadows and or like different lighting effects. And so in this case, we're not only getting this, this ray tracing, but also the chromatic dispersion of light, of it spreading out around the contours of whatever shape you're working with. This is absolutely brilliant that I'm able to see this image so crisply in real time, like deep that. Speaking of real time, let's get this rendered and see what we've got. Nice. So I've just set up my directory and we're rendering at 500 samples. So considering we've got 500 samples and all of this glass diffusion, let's get this rendered and it's literally already done. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. That was, what? Nine seconds. Last few frames have been taking like around four seconds to render, which is just, it's, it's beyond comprehension. The 4090 has 24 gigabytes of virtual RAM, which just means that if you've got millions of polys in your scene, like I always do, you don't even have to worry about navigating it, moving things around, scaling, and then rendering on top of that. It's just, it just takes the frustration out of 3D. You just have the freedom to be creative and let the computer do the computing, do you know what I mean? So this is what we're left with. I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something step up your sort of materials. You can save this as in your material library and use it whenever you want for whatever project. Thanks once again to NVIDIA for sponsoring today's video. It's because of them that I'm bringing you more interesting content. I'm so blessed and grateful for this brilliant graphics card that I'm operating with. And like I said, I promised you there'll be more videos coming because of it, because now I can make stuff. I can make whatever I want. So thank you all for watching and I hope this helped. See ya. <laughs> all right, three, two, one. I'm currently editing this video in Premiere and it's also accelerated. <laughs>